to talk about OS customization uh, pretty briefly because it's very operating system specific. Sorry. We're going to talk about OS customization very briefly because it's uh, very operating system specific. And so if we show you a bunch of stuff about how to customize Mac OS, it won't be useful if you're a Linux user and vice versa. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple of concepts which we think are useful and we'll link to a bunch of resources in the course notes. Uh, so the first thing we want to talk about is keyboard remapping. We talked about this briefly during the BIM lecture uh, last week. But basically, uh, your keyboard probably has keys that you don't use very much. And so instead of having useless keys on your keyboard, you should remap them to make them do useful things. Uh, the keyboard is a much more uh, high bandwidth and useful way of interacting with your computer than your mouse. And so you should try to make that tool as optimized as possible. And so for Mac OS, for example, you can go into System Preferences, Keyboard, and you can do some uh, customization in here. Like if you go to Modifier Keys, you can remap your modifier keys to make them do different things. Uh, one key that I don't use on my computer, for example, is the Caps Lock key. Because like, I don't need to shout at people that often, and when I do, I can hold down the Shift key. And so uh, I, I remapped it to Escape, because I'm a Vim user, and in Vim, Escape puts you back into normal mode, so I'm pressing this key all the time. And if I need to press the escape key in the top left corner of my keyboard, well, that's like a kind of awkward motion to do, whereas the caps lock key is right there. Um, so that's one example of very simple keyboard customization that's pretty useful. Um, and like Mac OS by default will let you remap any modifier key to any other modifier key or just disable it if it is not useful to you. Um, but if you want to do more complicated things, like you can really remap any key to any other key. And so there's some third party software to let you do this and we've linked to it. Uh, um, you can also uh, not just map keys or key combinations to other keys, you can remap key combinations to arbitrary commands, right? So you can say like, okay, when I do control alt T, it should launch terminal and uh, or things like that. You can even do program specific things, so like if this program is running and I hit this, this key combination, like then click this thing in the menus and things like that. And so you can optimize your work for, uh, workflow pretty heavily um, through key customization, uh, keyword customization. So, yes, uh, put in the effort to make your keyboard as useful as possible. Next thing we're gonna talk about is hidden operating system settings. So no matter which operating system you're on, you probably have something like this on your software, like system settings or something like that, which will let you go and configure a bunch of things in the way you like. Um, and this will expose a bunch of settings, but usually your operating system lets you customize even more things. It's just not exposed through this graphical interface. So like, for example, for Mac OS, there's the default command that'll let you change a bunch of, you know, hidden settings. And there's a lot of stuff in there that's pretty useful. So like, for example, if you do like default, right, com.apple.doc, show hidden dash rule true, you can find these commands online. But uh, this thing, for example, will make it so if I hide a program, so, like, so I'm pressing command H, this program is now hidden, it will actually make it translucent in the doc. Um, and so it's just like a kind of helpful thing, right? If I have a bunch of programs running and some are hidden, if I want to see which ones are hidden, which ones are not, well, this is a kind of nice way of distinguishing them. And this is, a, this is something that's not exposed through the user interface, but it's a setting that you can change. And there are tons of these things online. They're actually pretty useful. Um, and unfortunately, there's not really a list of all possible things you can change. Um, but one thing you can do is you can look through how other people have configured their systems. So like for example, we've linked to this one file online. A lot of people use this particular configuration. But here, uh, you can see lots of things, like Mac OS by default hides the scroll bar. You can see the scroll bar briefly on the right, and it stops showing as soon as I stop scrolling. Well, if that's something that bothers you, well, like you can go disable that. Um, and there's just tons of stuff that you can configure. Um, this particular file has a lot of these useful configurations along with some explanation of what they do. And so this is something that's totally worth doing. Um, and this general idea of hidden settings that are actually quite useful to tune if you care about making your setup super optimized um, exists in, different, uh, in, in all the operating systems. You just need to look at different blog posts or articles or things like people's dot files online to see exactly how they've configured their stuff. Um, and we won't get into the details of particular configurations because see which ones apply to you. Um, and then the last general idea I want to talk about is window management. So uh, it's probably the case that you guys are all using uh, 
graphical interfaces, right? Even if you spend most of your time in the terminal, you probably do some web browsing, and so you have something that looks like a browser window or something else. Um, and how do these windows, uh, like how are they manipulated, how are they managed? Well, most of us use window managers that look like this. Like we have rectangles that can be overlaid on top of each other in any, in any way we want. Um, but it's actually kind of annoying to get this to do you know, sophisticated things that could be useful. Like say I'm programming and I want to see my web browser on one side and my terminal on the other and want like some ratio of sizes between them. Like it's kind of a lot of effort to do that if I go and set this to the right size and I go click on my terminal and like move it over here and click and drag things around until they look right. This is a ton of effort. Um, so uh, what you should do is configure keyboard shortcuts and other things to help you manipulate windows. Um, one particular style of window management is something called tiling window management. Instead of having windows that overlap each other in kind of weird ways, well, for the most part, you probably want to see 100% of every window you have open on your machine. And so you should organize things into non-overlapping frames. And there are tools that can help you do that really efficiently. If you're using a uh, Linux-based operating system, you can actually find tiling window managers that will kind of always enforce this um, and give you very efficient ways of manipulating it. And if you're using something like Windows or Mac OS, you can install third-party applications that will kind of let you approximate that behavior. So like with keyboard shortcuts, I can efficiently do things like split my windows uh, vertically or horizontally or however I want in pretty complicated ways and let me move windows between different monitors and things like that. Um, and there are also other things so besides just you know, having windows take up portions of screens, you can get things that will show you some prompt which will say, okay, like, here's a grid overlay on your screen and I want you to take this current window and have it go from like this grid section to that grid section and take up this part of the screen. Um, and so we've linked to a couple different tools that can help you do this sort of thing. The one I'm using, for example, is an you know, operating system automation tool called Hammerspoon for Mac OS, which lets you bind uh, different commands to different key combinations. And what I've done is I've taken, okay, like I've picked whichever key combinations I want, and then there's a bunch of built-in functions for well, window manipulation. So I can say, okay, I want to be able to move windows so they take up some half of a screen or some quarter of a screen and so on. And I want some key binding for having a grid system overlaid on my screen and being able to specify exactly which portions of a grid a window should take up. And all of these things are super customizable. And even the thing like a grid system, if I have different monitors of different sizes, say I have a gigantic monitor, then I probably want like a very fine grid, like lots of grid cells. But on my laptop, it wouldn't really make sense if I had 100 by 100 grid because I'm not going to make windows like super packed together. Um, and you can customize all that sort of stuff um, in really uh, straightforward ways. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about is something called uh, encoding layouts in code. And so it's probably the case that when you're working, you have kind of standard way you arrange your different windows, right? You might have multiple monitors. You might say, okay, like on this big vertical monitor I have, I keep my terminal open so I can look at my code in this nice vertical monitor. And then I have this other monitor where like in half of the screen I have my web browser, and in the other half of the screen I keep Slack open so I can talk to my uh, colleagues. But then like whenever I go home, I move my windows around in some different way. And like every morning when I come into work, I spend the first five minutes kind of putting everything exactly where I want it to be. So like, of course, you shouldn't spend your time doing that. And the general theme in this class is anything that's repeated, you should just automate away. And of course, there are tools to help you with this sort of thing. So like for example, we've linked to the specific tools in the course notes for Mac OS. Uh, Hammerspoon's a really nice way of doing this. But you can kind of encode different ways you want to lay things out, um, give them names and like bind them to keys or stick them in a menu or something. And so just with a small amount of code, I have, like I've uh, encoded a bunch of layouts for when I'm uh, in my lab here or when I'm at my house where I have a slightly different monitor configuration or things like that. And just with a single click of a button, I can get all my windows to be the right shape and in the right place and hidden or not hidden or whatever. It's so like every morning when I get into work, I press a button and everything is just the way it's supposed to be. And so it's, a, it's just like a general tool you can set up for Mac OS or for any other system. Um, and it'll save you a bunch of time. Uh, and yeah, so this is, this is all we have for OS customization. Because if we wanted to go into a lot more detail, it would be OS specific and then people who are, like, I do a lot of Mac OS stuff and don't spend too much time on it desktop, so I wouldn't talk too much about that. And it wouldn't be fair to the people who are not using the same operating system as me. But we have links to more resources in the course notes.
One thing in particular that I think you should look at, I think it's really cool, is there's a subreddit, this one's linked at the bottom uh, of your list of resources, called Unix porn. And basically, it's people showing screenshots of their like really heavily modified configurations that do lots of really cool things. And usually along with the screenshots, people have explanations of exactly how they've set this stuff up. Um, so they'll show like, what's on the screen and uh, like what programs they're using. And oftentimes they'll even link to the specific configuration file that they're using. So it's kind of cool to just browse through this and see like what people have done for their super optimized workflows. And then you can copy the parts of it which are relevant to you. Okay, so any questions about OS customization? Okay, great. Uh